good morning good afternoon good evening everyone based on where you are thank you so much for joining i am naomi arun and i will be moderating the session today welcome to the stocks at google session with dr rv ramani and welcome dr ramani we are so grateful to have you here with us today to talk about your inspiring journey with shankar ai foundation i am very excited about your talk i have personally seen the amazing work that shankar ai foundation has done in india most blindness is curable or preventable but most people in rural india cannot afford basic eye care shankar ai is bridging this gap by bringing world class eye care to rural india for free dr ramani is the founder and managing trustee of shankar ai foundation india when dr ramani and his wife dr radha ramani were young medical professionals they soon realized the imperative need for voluntary initiatives in the healthcare sector and thus was born the shankara movement in 1977 for the last 44 years we have been on a dedicated mission to eradicate curable blindness in india and have grown shankara into the world's biggest free eye care provider needless to say after all this dr ramani has received numerous awards through the year the most recent of them being in 2019 when he was conferred the padma shri award by the president of india which is one of the top civilian awards in the country thank you again dr ramani for joining us here today to talk about your inspiring journey and the incredible social impact that shankara has had and continues to have a quick note on our agenda to our listeners now we'll now hear from dr ramani after which we'll have about 15 20 minutes to answer any questions you may have thank you and over to you now dr ramani good morning good afternoon and good evening dear friends from google across the globe namaskar to all of you it's indeed an honor and pleasure for me to share with all of you this evening interact i would like to share a story a story of how passion empathy hard work and perseverance have molded a movement as the world's largest free eye care provider the journey of 44 years humble beginning with big dreams we believe that health is a fundamental human right and it is an attainable social goal health development is an integral part of social development and in a developing country like india there is a huge need for health care government alone cannot cope up with this need therefore it becomes obligatory on the part of non governmental voluntary initiatives to come forward and supplement the governmental effort so we chose health care there we specified i care because vision is the gift of god to behold the beauty of nature whatever may be the cause to be blind is not fair if it can be either prevented or cured by quality i care swami vekananda said take up one idea make that one idea your life think of it dream of it live on that idea let the brain muscles nerves bones every part of your body be full of that idea and just leave every other idea alone and that is the way to succeed the inspiring words which has inspired everyone in this moment the first spark came to me from my dear father dr a ramanathan who was one of the earliest doctors of this industrial city of coimbatore way back in 1940s he was practicing in the year 42 we were told that there was an epidemic of plague in this part of the country and three of the doctors who were here they worked so much saved thousands of lives and the people started respecting them like demi gods as maybe in in early 50s and mid 50s whenever i used to go with him in his car i was a school student an elementary school student some of you might remember or know that in the in the downtown area the downtown area of the uh, cities in uh, india always there used to be a small little extension in front of every house and uh, it's something like a bench and we call it as a thinai those days there were no tvs or anything people used to sit on that they used to talk to the neighbors people across the road and things like that whenever i used to go with my father in his car 
looking at the car itself, a doctor's car, people used to stand up in respect. That is the kind of respect they gave to this noble profession of medicine. And as a school student, I felt I will, if at all possible, become a doctor. My family supported subsequently. And after my medical education, I came back to Coimbatore. And along with my doctor wife, Dr. Radha Ramani, we started a memorial clinic in memory of my father, late father, Dr. Ramanathan. We started in the year 1972. Within the first five years, we proved ourselves to be one of the topmost practitioners because of the rich clientele of my father and both husband and wife being doctors, it's easy to pick up the practice and we are doing extremely well. But in spite of this roaring practice, I had something, both of us had a feeling, should we not do something beyond, beyond our own practice? But we didn't know what to do, where to do, and how to do. There was a turning point. His Holiness Kanti Shankaracharyas. They were just telling the doctors, you all should take up health care. At least a couple of hours once in a week, try and spare some time. And that is how they were just trying to promote all the doctors across the country to take up voluntary initiatives. We were inspired, inspired, motivated, and guided by the Shankaracharyas, a divine inspiration to take up the cause. And that was a turning point for us in the year 1977, a change in the course in our life's pursuit. A two-room center was given to us, a medical center, 21st May, 1977. The medical center was started to provide primary health care. Rupees five as the corpus seed and many like-minded people coming to the, together to address the need. 10 doctors in their mid twenties and late twenties and 10 volunteers. We joined together and said, let us provide primary health care. Shankaracharya told us, give them medicines, everything free. Just charge 50 paisa. Even a poor man can give 50 paisa. Let him have a value for the medicine what he has taken. Let him feel that he has paid for his disease. And he opened a bank account with rupees five as a corpus. Even now I remember that starting point for Shankara. Friends, the woman by the side, not behind, not in front. Dr. Radha, had the co-founder of the Shankara movement, has been with me right from the day one with a passion and commitment in this movement and that encourages and we keep encouraging both of us in this movement and she has been an enormous source of support strength for the entire movement of Shankara. The evolution, the growth of the organization right from a lava stage up to a butterfly. We were a medical center to start with, Kanchi Kamakoti Medical Center providing primary health care then we added a diagnostic wing where we could do the basic investigations. We started immunizing the children as well, a small little surgical wing in our friend Dr. Ross' place. And as we were growing like this in primary health care, the industrial groups of Coimbatore approached us and said, why don't you help us start similar medical centers? We started nine such medical centers over a radius of 40 kilometers and all put together, we were handling 1,000 patients a day, providing basic primary health care. Why eye care? In the year 1985, we felt that we have to take up eye care because there's a huge need. 43 million in India are visually handicapped. Over 9 million are totally blind. One fourth of the world's blind population is in our country. The irony is majority of blindness is either preventable or curable. Non-availability, non-accessibility, non-affordability. Many in the villages still continue to be in darkness because of these reasons. As the population grows and the aging process, the life expectancy also goes up, more and more people are going to land up with visual uh, impairment. COVID backlog right now, the last two years, we could not operate on many patients. And now there is going to be a lot of people with cataract, mature cataract, hypermature cataract, waiting for that day when they can get the ray of hope, perhaps God willing, in the next 15 days to one month, we'll start the process again, government will give us the permission. For all this need, dear friends, what is the solution we thought? It is community eye care. Providing high quality, cost-effective, 
readily available eye care at the doorsteps of rural India. Blindness impacts not only the individual, but also the family and the society at large. There's a huge financial loss because of people with visual impairment not able to work. So we strongly felt that no one should be needlessly blind. We said, let us give comprehensive eye care, preventive eye care, curative eye care, and rehabilitative eye care, the entire range. Gift of Vision Rural Outreach Program we started along with Rotary Central and Rotary International. And today we go to the villages all through. The program is an outreach program. We are not waiting for the poor people to come to us. We go to the villages after a survey of the population, conduct the weekend screening over there, identify those who would benefit out of surgery, bring them in our own vehicles to the base hospital, accommodate them, investigate them, provide them with a state-of-the-art surgery, medicines and food, all free of cost, drop them back after three days in their own places, go back to them after one month for a medical audit and a qualitative analysis. Friends, glad to share with you, over the last three and a half decades, we have not missed a single Saturday Sunday without conducting this gift of vision program. Over five and a half million patients have been examined and over 2.1 million free eye surgeries have been performed. With pardonable pride, we are looking back at the performance. Friends, in children, there are a lot of undetected visual defects. A lot of children, and initially it used to be around five to seven percent, of late it's almost 15 percent of children, they have visual defects, which is not known to them, not, not known to the teachers, nor to the parents. Imagine a child sitting in the last row, not able to see the blackboard, say, with one eye. The child goes and sits in the first row, still not able to see. Subconsciously, the child stops using that eye and starts using the other eye. We call it as a lazy eye, the amblyopia. One of our own eye surgeon's child did not have vision in one eye, and the mother is a surgeon, eye surgeon. She didn't know. If this can happen in an educated family, imagine the millions of children in the villages. So we started the rainbow program. We started going to the schools and screening them. Timely identification, prompt treatment. Over 6 million students have been already checked up thoroughly and benefited out of this program. Rehabilitation again, it is community-based rehabilitation. Go to the incurably blind, identify them, give them mobility exercises, vocational training, and braille education wherever it is required. So this is yet another activity. Eye banking and corneal transplant, we had taken up right from 1985 because a lot of misconceptions. We went to the public and told them, do not bury, do not burn, donate eyes, it is divine. Because misconception, they were wondering what to do when somebody dies. We motivated them. Glad to share with you, friends. Right now, we are getting a pair of eyes almost every day for corneal transplantation. For all these activities, these service activities, for it to be perpetuated, we need to have a sustainable model. We chose a unique model of 80s to 20. 80% of the beneficiaries come from the villages and we give them totally free eye care to the poorest of the poor. The balance 20% or the rich, the affordable section, the middle income group, they pay for the treatment, thereby cross-subsidizing the free surgeries and making the hospital self-sustaining, a unique model of 80s to 20. He didn't want to compromise. In the name of charity, quality cannot be compromised at any cost. We said Sankalps, Shankara Quality Assurance Learning Program, an ongoing initiative, make sure that quality and excellence, pursuit of excellence, the topmost agenda. There is an accreditation process in India called the National Accreditation Board. Glad to tell you that all the Shankara Eye Hospitals are accredited under the NABH program. Process excellence, safety, patient care, for all this, numerous quality awards, including the prestigious Bajaj Award has been conferred on Shankara. Friends, in short, we have over the decades created a world-class eye care with a social impact, the largest free eye care provider globally. We didn't miss out on the research and using of arti artificial intelligence as well. In products, research in products, and processes as well. 
We have designed and patented certain intraocular lenses for the children, which we incorporate in our regular surgeries. Character processes, a synthetic cornea, which can be used for certain corneal blindness, rare diseases. Artificial intelligence for diagnosing diabetic retinopathy well in advance. And now, right now, we are working on how to use AI to diagnose cataract early enough. So research is an integral part through our Shankara Academy of Vision. Friends, today we are a pan-India institution. In eight states of India, serving 78 districts. Two more states are going to be added shortly, Maharashtra and Telangana. Vande Mataram, to expand, to replicate, to reach the unreached, share our experience expertise so that many will benefit in India and get into the the, their future becomes bright and they get out of the blindness which has been hitherto hampering their future. Friends, for any organization, you also need a big booster. I was told that some of these aircrafts have two sets of engines. The first set of engine takes the aircraft and it's fired the engine, takes the aircraft to a very high altitude. And once it reaches an altitude, the second set of engines are fired and that gives a you know, onward thrust, huge onward thrust. That happened to our movement in the year 1998 when Shankara Eye Foundation USA was formed, thanks to my good friend P. Balasubramanyam here, who was inspiring and motivating his nephews, Murli and Sridhar, and Murli and Sridhar in Bay Area, in Melpitas to be precise, along with their friends, they joined hands and created one of the finest organizations, Shankara Eye Foundation USA, to help the Shankara Eye Foundation's activities in India. Amazing group of friends, board members, volunteers, and well-wishers. They are highly passionate. Whenever we go there every year, looking at them, we get inspired. Sitting there in US, if they can be so much motivated to raise resources from all like-minded people like you, we felt we should do much more. Right now, they have a grand vision of 2030, 1 million free eye surgeries year on year, create replicable and sustainable models, Beyond our own Shankarai hospitals, they've also identified eight other hospitals at this stage who can also render service in their own parts in India so that the service is spread across the country. Friends, there is always certain com confusions where Shankara, the name change, because of the commonality in the name, there are few more institutions as well. To give clarity, we in India are Shankara Eye Foundation India. We are based out of Coimbatore, Community eye care is our trust area. We are spread across India as a pan-India organization. We work on an 80-20 model, free is to paying, and that is Shankara Eye Foundation India. Shankara Eye Foundation USA is our other side of the coin. They are in United States, based out of California, but they have chapters across United States. And they, it's a 501c, a reputed 501c organization, raise resources to support our activities, charity activities in India. Friends, the reward. We have been in this for 44 years. 44 years of service. It's a humble beginning and big dreams. Whenever we see the patients getting the benefit, that's the reward. Share, glad to share with you what happened in the year 1996. A small little child, totally blind in both eyes, Baby Michael from the forests of Bagur, which is in between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, from a deep inside a tribal village, Michael had a very pathetic history. His mother died soon after the boy was born, the baby was born. The illiterate villagers thought he's an evil child and poured a concoction over him to cure him of the evilness. He was blinded. He was brought to Coimbatore, one eye is totally gone. The other I had very little chance of getting vision. We waited for a young donor cornea, did the transplant third day after the bandage was removed. We slowly opened the door to see what this kid was doing. Believe me, my dear friends, the child was sitting on the cot, keeping his hand in front of his operated eye, and he was just moving it up and down. Could you imagine what would have been our feeling at that time? Millions will not give you that satisfaction. When we give, give vision to a child, we give next 80 to 90 years of productive life. When we give vision to an adult, we make him or her the breadwinner of the family. 
When vision is given to an elderly couple, they become independent for their day-to-day -day activities. They don't have to strain other members in the family. Giving gift, the vision, the gift of vision, my dear friends, the reward is amazing and that keeps us going. That brings many people into the fold, into this wonderful moment. What are the lessons learned over four decades of this journey? The recipe. When we take a need-based cause, a cause where there is a felt need, not because we have something we want to give it to them. No, people should feel there is a need. It's a need-based cause. When we have the dream, when we have the passion to pursue that dream. Clear goals, focus in what we are trying to do and total transparency. Any public institution should be transparent. Everyone should know how it is going and where it's going. Process and systems in place. As we replicate and listen until we have the process and systems, we cannot. Committed team, very important. Teamwork need not necessarily mean unanimity of ideas, but it necessarily means unanimity of purpose. Constant human resource development, inculcating the Shankara culture into them. Our Shankara Academy of Vision is always involved in an ongoing human resource development. How we transform, we, they come to us as a manpower and we train and make them as a human asset and human capital. Creating strong second line of leaders who can perpetuate, take the movement forward, very important. Power of collective participation. A thousands of people have come in from different walks of life. Very difficult to name all of them, but our own chairman, S.P. Balasubramaniam, our chief patron, Mr. G.V. Ishwar, Mr. Nataraj, who gave five acres of gifted land in Coimbatore, like that thousands and thousands of people have got involved in this movement. So collective participation above all, whatever religion or faith we all belong, we agree that there is a power beyond us. That divine grace completes the cycle. Emerson quoted, he says, Everyone born in this world, we cannot say that he or she has lived the life in its proper perspective. He defines living, he says, to love often and much, to win the appreciation of honest critics, to endure the betrayal of false friends, to love beauty, to make this world a bit better, whether by, whether by a green garden patch or a redeemed social condition. To know that even one life breathes easier because we lived that is to have succeeded. Miracles cannot cure the blind, dear friends, but together we can.
It's indeed my pleasure now to present a very short film on Shankara Eye Foundation USA to know the passion, empathy, and commitment. Presenting the heart and soul of Shankara Eye Foundation USA, the chairman, Mr. Murli Krishnamurti. Dear friends, thank you for this great opportunity to present Shankara Eye Foundation SCF USA at Google Talk. SCF USA was founded in the year 1998 to support the work of Dr. Ramani and his fantastic team at the Sankara Eye Foundation India. When you think of SCF USA, three distinguishing features come to mind. One is big vision, motivated by Swami Vivekananda's uh, thinking of think big, don't accept any limitations. Uh, we came up with the big vision to eradicate curable blindness in India. And now we are the largest free eye care provider with performing over 210,000 free eye surgeries at our own 10 Sankara Eye Hospitals and 8 partner hospitals. And number two feature is self-sufficiency. We realized right in the beginning that to be able to scale, the previous hospitals need to become self-sufficient. So the 80-20 model works this way. 80% of the patients who are mostly rural poor and the poorest of the poor get their care totally free of cost and the 20% of the other people who can afford to pay, like the IT staff in Bangalore, and most of us when we visit, we avail of our world-class services and we pay for the cost. So it takes five to seven years and the hospitals become self-sufficient. In fact, just before COVID, Sankara Eye Foundation India was almost 100% self-sufficient. COVID has put us back by one or two years, but we are not worried, we will catch up. And the third most important thing for uh, most donors is the Charity Navigator top four star rating for the eighth consecutive time for commitment to accountability, transparency, governance, and for keeping the overheads low. My favorite tagline is, we are so trustworthy that you can close your eyes and donate, we'll open more eyes. More about our uh, big vision and our activities. Over the past two decades, Sankara Eye Foundation as India has scaled successfully by building 10 community eye care hospitals in the states of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Gujarat, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh to perform over 150,000 free eye surgeries annually. To be able to reach our new goal of Vision 2030, 1 million surgeries every year by the year 2030, we started working with partner hospitals. Over the last four years, this partner network has grown to eight hospitals in the states of Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, and West Bengal to perform 60,000 free eye surgeries annually. Two more Sankara Eye Hospitals are coming up in Panvel, Mumbai, inauguration June 2021. And Hyderabad, Telangana, inauguration 2022. And we are also going to expand our Guntur, Andhra Pradesh hospital. And four new partner hospitals are coming up in Odisha, Uttar Pradesh, and two in Bihar. With the success of our partner hospital model and the growth and expansion of our own Sankara eye hospitals, we at Sankara have a line of sight to 1 million free eye surgeries by the year 2030 for the rural poor. SEF USA is mostly run by volunteers, almost 1,000 volunteers, with only three full-time employees, raising six to seven million dollars every year. It's amazing indeed. Uh, our DNA is big thinking, so we do, we organize big events, big dandias, 6,000, 7,000 people, big Bollywood events, Sonu Nigam, Shreya Goshal, Shankar Esan Loy, and we do walkathon, we do holy, and we do banquets all over the country. We keep booths at all events, and right from the beginning, we understood the importance of advertisement. So we do marketing and fundraising. And another important part of our workers to take care of our 90,000 donors, donor care. And for more information, your own Google person, Navin Narendra, is available, and www.giftofvision.org. Recently at uh, our Envision event, Anand Mahindra, who is the chairman of the Mahindra group, has this to say. I have to admit, I was simply awestruck. The idealist in me was impressed by the loftiness of the foundation's vision, which is to eradicate curable blindness in India. And the businessman in me was even more impressed by the strategic and business-like approach. 
फाइनली लेट मी लिव यू विथ अ ब्यूटिफुल सॉन्ग ज्योत से ज्योत जलाते चलो प्रेम की गंगा बहाते चलो मीनिंग लाइट मेनी मेनी लैम्प्स विथ अ लैम्प एंड स्प्रेड लाओ थैंक यू dear friends on behalf of shankara i foundation india and shankara i foundation usa i would like to invite every one of you get yourself involved in this humanitarian mission for vision i conclude with the words of rabindranath tagore the golden words in gitanjali he says where the head is held high where the mind is without fear where the knowledge is free where the words come from the depth of truth where the world is not broken down by narrow domestic walls into that heaven of freedom my father let my country awake jai hind thank you very much dr ramani thank you so much for sharing your journey with us it was i while i was listening it was so inspiring and so moving to understand how you are giving the gift of vision to millions it's an incomparable gift um a quick note to our listeners to please put in your questions any questions you may want to ask dr ramani in the live chat box and uh, while you do that i have one question myself that i really wanted to ask um how can googlers help with your mission are are there any tangible ways which you can advise us on googlers Uh, can get involved in united states through shankara i foundation supporting the cause over here contributing for free surgeries contributing for certain uh, equipment or the infrastructure it is a 501c organization beyond that their families their children if they would like to volunteer back home here in india through shankara i foundation you say they can come spend about a month or two participate in the service activities and this is the way they'll get a feel of it and we'll be able to inculcate that in the young minds and whenever they come to india they are also welcome to come and spend time with us now we are taking up artificial intelligence and lot of the search work wherein googlers can play a vital role shankara i foundation india and all the hospitals we have varieties of cases day in and day out more than around 750 free surgeries are performed every day we go to the villages and see the varieties of patients as well so we from shankara i foundation india are willing to join hands with google to take up research activities maybe in the field of artificial intelligence and so on and we are very keen to take it forward thanks dr ramani that is very good to know and i'm sure uh, many googlers will uh, avail of this guidance and help with shankarai foundation um i think we are now ready for some audience questions which should be coming up soon yes so a question from sofia what has been the hardest part of providing high quality and cost effective eye care and how can you overcome these obstacles through the years well there are a couple of challenging things over here the first and foremost is the the financial support to set up a high quality i care it is a good infrastructure we cannot compromise on that good kind of equipment again we cannot compromise on that so a capital expenditure but much beyond this is the human resource it is the human resource which, which make all the difference so training the doctors the optometrists the paramedical staff the vision care technicians the support staff grooming them not only with the technical know how but also with the passion to serve is a big task that is where our shankara academy of vision which is the capacity building arm we take it forward so challenges what you have faced one is finance and one is human resource government is supportive but once we prove ourselves they are also willing to come forward and help us to reach out to more and more people got it understood thanks dr ramani um one more question i had what so in in india you are doing a phenomenal job and you have this mission of um, arriving at 1 million free eye surgeries annually by the year of 2030 
What are your plans to go beyond India? Yes. Uh, thanks, Naomi. Basically, we have uh, going outside the country is not new to us. We went to um, uh, Cambodia way back in 94, 95 itself. We trained the human resource over there. We performed free surgeries, brought a couple of doctors from there, trained them here and sent them back. Similarly, we did some service for Nepal and we did for uh, Seychelles and Nigeria. So to put it in a, in a, uh, in a small this thing, what basically we at Shankara have the technology, have the know-how. Any country where there is a need for quality eye care, if an organization would like to set up a, a, a free eye care service for that matter, we can take up the capacity building for them and the know-how can be given from here. It can be provided from our end. So we can come forward and train those people. So we are willing to take up the cost, not only in India, the deserving states, but even beyond. Understood. Thanks, Dr. Ramani. And in terms of India itself, what are the future plans of SEF India in terms of either hospital construction, expansion, uh, or anything else? Uh, right now, as uh, Mr. Murli explained, our hospital in Mumbai is getting ready to be inaugurated in about a week's time. And the Telangana Hospital in Hyderabad the next year. So we are looking at other deserving states, states, the Northeast states, as well as uh, the uh, um, states like Bihar and uh, Uttar Pradesh, where already there are some partner hospitals, but those big states need not uh, more than one hospital. So we are just, we do a feasibility study. The need, we look at the need and we look at the, uh, the the prospectiveness, how can we make a self-sustaining model over there? And once it is then, then we identify the right location and take the human resource from that area, train them. So it's a process. So after these two hospitals, we are, we are keen in taking up a few more states in India and also train our partner hospitals. Got it. Oh, that's, that's a huge expansion plan lined up already in India then. That is, that is very great to hear. Um, how, how would you describe uh, that SEF is different from other charitable eye care providers in India in terms of either business model or your go-to community eye care model um, or any or across any other parameter? Um, A, every hospital um, is very keen for that matter to give quality service. But the pursuit of excellence, which we try to inculcate in everybody, right from a surgeon to a support staff, and make sure that the overall package itself, perhaps some, something which can, cannot be compared, that kind of a quality we try and give, that is number one. Number two, we do not wait for the poor people to come to our doorstep, as I mentioned. We go in search of them, outreach. This outreach activity, so apart from the hospital per se, now we have gone to the a, a new method of creating vision centers, satellite centers in different villages, uh, permanent establishments where the patients can come. And we're using telemedicine to link those vision centers with the base hospital. So this kind of a comprehensive approach with one big base hospital and satellite centers around so that the sizable area can be covered. Yet another area we totally differed in the sense is the 80-20 model. There are any number of institutions doing good work, but to the extent of providing such a major chunk of free surgeries and then a minimal number of paying patients, but still out of uh, the, the way we just work, that we, we, we make sure that there is a perfect balancing between 80 and 20 and the hospital becomes self-sustaining and a pan-India. There are hospitals which are located in one state or maybe a couple of states. By going to other, in India, you would agree that every state is like a separate country. The language is different. The culture is different. Their expectations are, approach are different. So in order to reach out to them, it's a big challenge. So Shankara has taken as a venture, we are going across the country. So this is the way we differ from most of the institutions. That is, that is amazing to hear, Dr. Ramani. Uh, once again, I cannot tell you how thankful we are that you are here today with us at Talks at Google to share share this yeah. incredible journey that you've had with Shankarai Foundation, where we've built it up from humble beginnings to now where it is the biggest free eye care provider. Thank you again. And 
um, we can't wait to have you here with us another time. Thank you very much, Naomi, and all the friends, Googlers, for this program. Namaskar to all of you.